Welcome to the 49th Wood End Lions Art Show. It's a big one. Um, more works than last year, um, some exciting entries and some surprise judgments. Well, what a wonderful show. The quality of the works that we've seen here are outstanding. Yeah. There are some that are just popping with creativity. There are others that are working down a path of derivation from, from muses, but all of it is good work. Mm. And of course, all, all artists, whether they be professional or um, emerging, amateur, at whatever level, whatever age, will be influenced by others. It, it's part of what we do as creative human beings. We're influenced by work that we've seen previously. There, there's a huge amount of really gifted work in this particular show. It, it simply, as Brad has said, it's our measurement today on the work that we've seen, how it's affected us, um, how it's brought things up for us. We've had some great conversations based on your work, thank you. And, uh, and, that's, yeah. and that's success measure too. If, if your work doesn't sell over this weekend, that doesn't mean it's a lesser work or that you failed in some way. Absolutely. It simply means that your buyer wasn't around. Yeah, I think people are really going to um, experience a great time when they walk through these diverse works. A huge amount of diversity, use of different media. Um, it's a feast. In the over 12 section of the Youth Award, Madeline Gauchy's work, Jasmine, really took the judges' breath away. I loved this. Yeah, I mean, me it, too. I love pencil work. It, it's, it's a medium that I play with all the time. I like this because a portrait is a difficult thing to attack and this has been handled so well. For me, the measure of success of a portrait is whether you can empathise with the, the, the subject. And I, I can feel something in, mm -hmm. the, in this mm. subject here. Absolutely. Madeline Gauchi, the artist, has made the choice specifically not to centre this portrait. And, and that in and of itself, because it's a portrait that has a great deal of sensitivity mm. to me. So, so this tells me something about her subject, Jasmine, as it's called, um, that, that uh, there's something really interesting and, and unusual about this particular human. And, and she's captured that. And I just think it's extraordinary how she's graded between some very, very complex detail in the eye and around the, the eyelid. And we get this feathering off down towards the bottom of the picture where the hair is. And yet, and this is what you were saying earlier, you've got to encourage the viewer to get in and have a look at yes, this. Yes, you have to come in close. You can see hair. Yes. There is hair in there. Yeah. It's not just an amorphous grey washout with a pencil because I've had enough of it. She's got into it and she's yeah. really considered this drawing and, and, and in great detail. The fineness of stray hairs. And, and what I'm really drawn to is the quality of the skin because there are freckles and, and marks and mm. um, little tiny, you might say, blemishes or freckles, but um, it's real. And, and, and yet there's this sort of magical, sensitive quality to this portrait these eyes is not looking at us directly and that's beautiful because there's a, an introspection Neither in there she, that's really beautiful. I don't think she's looking at the viewer. Yeah. The viewer has to engage with the, with the subject yeah, in this piece. It's, it's, it's incredibly it's sophisticated. For beautiful it sensitivity. In the under 12 section of the Youth Award is Lenny Doig, Dan the Man. I just love the exuberance of the the subject, whoever this Dan the man is. I liked that there, and it's like the one we spoke about earlier, it's got complexity, but there's a simple concept under there that, that really jumps out at you. It's a great little drawing. Yeah, I, I just love the quirky nature of this portrait. There's a lot in the omissions, as you were saying. That Absolutely. There are no ears, there's no body, no, no background. There's this incredible signature, which we love. Yeah, I love that signature. It's a bold signature. It's a statement signature. Eight-year-old artist to do a drawn portrait of someone that is 
really a bit disconcerting to stand in front of, is really remarkable. It has expression and in fact it's a bit surrealist expressionist in, in its treatment. Mm. It's wonderful through the eyes of young people. This is actually what we look like. Technical skill in this is something. It, it's really, mind. it's really remarkable. So this is uh, Geordie Jem Williamson's um, artwork entitled Dolores. Um, I wrote brilliant technique and use of exacting detail along with great color sense. This is like a technical drawing. It is so finely detailed. Yeah, and, and it's also beautifully put on the page too. Yeah. There are a few fundamental rules of, of placement that are, have been carefully attended to. Extremely accomplished and worthy of commendation. This has original exuberance. This, this is yeah, spirit, yeah. spirit and, of koala. And character, spirit yeah. of koala. Yeah. 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 You've got it's, to love this picture. Isabel Barron is the young artist. And um, I just, I love the use of color. Hmm. I mean, greens and pinks and, you know, they're, they're the colors of, of the forest where koalas live. And it's a quirky koala. There's also wonderful attention to observation here. That reads koala without being literal in its rea realism. Totally. The square nose, the, the spacing of the eyes and the, yes. and the ears, that's definitely a koala. And the award for local artist went to Amanda Aish the hard mask, quite a piece. We were both immediately really taken with this piece for so many different varied reasons. Um, it's a really accomplished work. It's titled The Hard Mask and it's very detailed and I would really encourage people to get in close and you need to see it from all angles because there is an extraordinary amount of detail in this work. I wrote so much detail and consideration alongside really powerful archetypal symbology. And that, that is um, very apparent in this work. It's a stunning three-dimensional work. It shows great professional skills and, and um, something, a word that we don't often use any longer, I think, for artists, which is imagination. I, I'm intrigued by the crossover between realism, and there's a lot of it in this piece, and the absolute fantasy of the ultimate mm -hmm. subject. It's just, yes. why is there a swan on the side of the head? Why are the snails there? Yeah. It keeps on giving to you. You can keep looking at it, returning to it, and you find more, and of course, this is one of those. Yes. This is a painter's sculpture. It's got the detail that a visual artist in two dimensions will bring to a canvas or a piece of paper but successfully translated into a three-dimensional form. And she's chosen here with this mask to screw it in places to the rest of the figure. And, and that's a really powerful statement. It speaks to all sorts of things of, of the mask, the persona, the, the hidden aspect of perhaps the sacred divine feminine. It does that, but it also says that this mask isn't going to be easily removed. So, yes. that the, And there's also an interesting statement, just technically for me, that to, to decide to screw into a ceramic piece is brave. It's a cracker. It's a, a really yeah. striking work. And, and I imagine it's going to have a lot of commentary. And the best photograph in show went to Annika Hoekstra. Trentham Falls, a standout piece. I loved this, and this took me right back to sitting in one of those old red rattlers and traveling up to the bush in the, on a train. Remember the images of, of Victorian scenic sites? Yes. Waterfalls. And yeah. It's got all of that quality to it, but it's so technically exquisite. It, it looks to me like she may have used a land camera um, a large format camera. I'm, I'm not certain, but the quality of this print. Just look at the way this pops. You've got this cascade of water and it's brilliant. And you can almost hear it. And then behind is this mysterious dark, which pulls that forward and a fern. It's yes. just a beautiful yes. set of 
compositions of tone. Absolutely. A magnificent landscape with deep, rich tonal blacks, revealing beautiful mystery in the shadow and the highlights singing. It's beautifully composed and highly skilled photographic work. It's very much in the compositional style of the, the painters of the 19th century, with the, the bush becoming ethereal and disappearing into mist. If you hark back to the history of photography and the great American Ansel Adams, who did the national parks oh, yeah. in, in the US, this has that feel. And I feel that she's captured Australian landscape um, with an homage to older photographers. Oh, yeah. Um, but of course, using her own individual eyes. So, mm. um, hats off. It's yeah. a beautiful work. Young artist's work. This is Mirabelle Wood, photographic artist, and the surprising and magnificent use of abstraction through photographic imagery um, is really exciting in this work. It's, she's called it leftovers. Fish skeleton. We're looking at, yeah. yeah. However. Well, who sees something like that as a thing of beauty? Absolutely. And that, that's the joy of art, where someone can take a subject that's the ordinary and create something of that. And in, in this case, using photography and taking photography to where it should go, yes. in my view, yes. and that is exploring and extracting all the, all the detail that's in those fish bones in the same way that all the flesh was extracted off them. It's great. Yes. And the best piece in other media went to Judy Perfect, Morning, Light and Shadow, Lake Hatter, 2023. Um, wow. This really engaged me. It was an image I saw of it from some distance away and I was drawn right into it. I was puzzled by the horizon line. I know the subject matters a flat part of this country. I'd love to know what, why that horizon line, if it is an horizon line, is tilted. But that doesn't detract from it. It just adds interest to it. I love the bleed out of the, 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 uh, the trees into the shadow. It's a wonderful piece. It's yeah. quite complex yeah. for, for its simplicity. Yes. I came around the corner, saw this work at quite a distance, and it just stopped me in my tracks. Um, I was taken by its graphic contemporary treatment of this space um, that she has obviously been uh, inspired to make a work with. Mm -hmm. And I loved that juxtaposed diagonal of, of a horizon line or such. And it, but it's caught in the composition, it's caught by this massing over here. Yes. So it does, yes. that diagonal doesn't take you out of frame and, and it's anchored back here. So it's a, it's a masterful piece of composition. Yes, because yes. she has used a number of different media oh, yeah. in this work, which is really always exciting. With beautiful suggestion of reflection and shadow and layers of light, it's really layered. I feel like there's light receding and advancing from all sorts of places from this work. It's highly skilled and as I said earlier, it's, it's contemporary. We've got perspective of that perspective having been labored into it. There is depth in here. Yes. I, know, I can hear the kookaburras in the distance. Yeah. It, it's, yep. it's a cracker. Yep. We really felt that we simply had to commend highly this work. Uh, the artist's name is Juddy Boyd. And this print work, which is titled The Neighbor, and, and for me, I also similarly saw this from a distance and it just grabbed me. So I came in closer because the scale, it's quite small, a work, and yet it speaks volumes. It, it's a quirky, funny character. I liked that there's so much white in this and the positive and the negative comes into play as always. Yeah. The, 
normal extent of detail that you expect to find in a print is missing, and that works well here. Yes. And that, that's quite a bold, bold gesture. And so we get these three primary forms balanced off beautifully with what could be a neck or a shoulder, who knows? Yes. I love that this person is sort of forced into the frame, like someone, it's called the neighbor. So I can imagine this person sticks their head out of the door oh, in the hallway and says, what are you doing? Mm. I get that sort of feeling. Yeah, the, narr the narrative is strong in this. Yeah, it? It has, and that's why it's got a high commendation. Yeah. I was drawn to the detail of this. Yeah. Uh, viewed from a distance, it becomes an abstraction of lovely forms and patterns get up close and you're into it. There are leaves and there's, of course, the subject of the... The Thrupani stamp. The Thrupani stamp, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. It's a great little piece. It's uh, rich, it's got, as I've banged on about before, inherent life on the wall. You'll walk past this a hundred times and find something new. I was so taken with this for so many different reasons. It, it does for me, have a reminiscence of early 1900s um, in terms of this sort of riot of color and, and uh, placement. It's the sort of work you could spend a lot of time with. Yes. And, and it's very layered, full of detail, that tapestry of, of cools and warms is just really, really wonderful. And the best watercolour in show went to Robert Brunton, Abstract Landscape Number 2. What a beauty. This is a wonderful little work. Mm. This does everything that watercolour should do. Yes. You can't produce this using oil. You can't produce this with a pencil. This is a masterful use of the brush and the material on the paper to get a watercolour. This can be nothing else other than a watercolour. That is just wonderful for me. I love the choice of scale mm. of these works because they have an intimacy. They, they make me want to go in closer mm. and, and kind of dive in. That to me looks like a wave. That looks like water, but it could be, it could be something it else. could be but anything. It, the picture yeah. is so small, but you get into it. Yeah. I've got a mountain in the background, I've got receding hills, I've got You've trees. Got mist, or fog, do I? Or there do you? There's so much in and there. That, that's the it, great mystery oh, of the visual it, art. It's just blows wonderful. I wrote brilliant use of the medium of watercolour mm. to leave an impression, a glimpse. So it's he hasn't given us all the information, he's left us with the ability to interpret and to be curious about what he's done. Which is it, what it, art should do for you. Yes, it, yeah. it's left me with a feeling of this place. It's small in scale, but large in impression. For me, this is using watercolour in a non-watercolour way, but it still is watercolour. Yeah. We've got filled edges and consistent colour all the way through. I like the abstraction of the landscape elements. It's got a rhythm to it that's nice. The way that rock sits almost sliding into the water and, and the bank and this tree trunk and these that thrust out of the water. It, it has movement, it has drama, it's a great use of colour. And once again, I feel it, it's a beautiful contemporary use of this medium. Mm. This particular watercolour, which is in diptych form, but vertically placed rather than horizontally side by side, um, is by the artist Judy Perfect. And I was so taken with the atmospheric impressionist feel of this. I feel like I'm standing there. And um, because her title speaks of morning and evening light, you can just feel that shift in temperature in, in what she's chosen to do with this. It works, it works. And I think somehow one, one feeds off the other and gives the overall work its strength. You know what it made me think of? 
if I'm somewhere in nature in the morning and then I go back to that same place at night and sit in the same place, I reflect on what it was like earlier under different light. So memory comes into this in some interesting juxtaposition that, that places are very different at different times of day. I might say that I think that this is a good example of how watercolour is perfectly adapted to plain air work. Yes. Because yes. that, by the time that brush was dipped in the medium, and by the time I got to this side of the paper, that light, the light changed. had changed. The best oil and acrylic in the show went to Susan Key, The Gathering. This is a hard one to talk to because <laughs> there's, there's always a temptation to intellectualise yeah. how you view a work, but this is purely visceral for me, I think. Of course there is intellectual unpacking of it, so to speak. I love the form of the composition, the strong diagonal, the way we've got wonderful play of dark tones and quite bright patches on the work. I love it. It's a beauty. I love it too. You stole my word, visceral. Mm. <laughs> it, it, um, it entered me, I would say, is the way I would describe it somehow. I love the outrageousness of the brush strokes. They're just so confident and riotous and uh, full of statement. Um, the, the boldness of color, there, there is a lilac here underneath this sort of rust that is just really surprising. And, and this streak of almost electric sky blue, it's called gathering. It is just so dynamic and, and um, inviting in some visceral, exciting, yet perhaps slightly dangerous way as well. I, can't, I really want to touch it. I won't. Of course, you would never do that in a museum. But it's, um, it's delicious. You kind of want to sink your teeth into it. <laughs> there you it, go. It's yeah. edible. What's really good about this as well is that there's been a variety of tools used to apply them at the medium. We've got palette knife and that's pulling off the canvas. We've got paintbrush and we get, so there we're getting a, a flatter, more smooth application. That adds interest quite apart from the colour and the tone. Great work. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, how the human brain seeks to interpret and make sense of shape. I mean, that's one of the joys of visual art is the oh. artist's ability to play yeah. with the human brain, the observer. Mm. And, and I just think it, it is unquestionably so dynamic and energetic. It, it is, it's mm. almost pushing me over. It has so much energy. And do you know what I'm, it, I'm it, noting about this? How animated we're getting talking about yes. it. Yeah. The work yeah. is animated and it does that to you. It's, a, Actually, it's successful it, at that level. It's, it's not just a visual art, it's a choreography. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a dance on canvas. This is worthy of commendation, not because it's a picture done in the old style. It's a, because it's a picture done well in the old style brilliantly in the old style. The technical skill in the, in the painting and the, the crafting of the, the subject matter into this tableau is, is yes. wonderful. Yes. And you use the word tableau. There are, there are rules and structures about still life from, from Renaissance times and the Middle Ages. He has followed beautifully and yet clearly still in his own way. Yeah, there's the reason achieved a great deal yeah. of realistic skill yeah. without going to that photorealistic yes. level. Yes, and the luminescence of these grapes. Yeah. And, and that's very typical. Um, in still life tableau, you often had something, it was a rule that you had to have something hanging off the table, or he's chosen to have the grapes as the hanging mm. um, 
aspect to this painting. And the density of interest down in this corner balances the yes. the negativity yeah, up in the in the top. Highly skilled. Oh, it's, it's a great piece. Yeah. So happy to Commend give it. this a commendation. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. I like everything about the feel that's been created with the tonality of this and the, the brushwork. The the distant view through behind the cattle. Can I really encourage people to come up close to this one? Mm. Um, because here, down here in the, these beautiful grasses, you can just feel the, the sunlight bouncing off those as they blow in the wind. Here, um, it's a tonal painting, and I really appreciate the use of darks and shadows from which everything reveals itself. They have had these cows here just wandering off into the shadows. There's yeah. just part of a, the back end of a cow, which is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I found it really pleasing to my sensibility in terms of balance, the way it's sitting and the lights and the darks. Dare I say it, it's as solid as the back end of a Hereford. <laughs> <laughs> I was really taken with this painting, the use of light in this painting, I think is just masterful and magnificent. And these gorgeous autumnal tones in the trees, and, and that, as you experience in real life, when light is just casting across something, you have moments like that. It, it's a glimpse, and there's this beautiful use of light on these branches, just mm. tiny little, um, luminous tendrils reaching into the canvas from this side. The re representation of the building isn't laboured. Most of it is hinted at and it's the back of the building. So it, it, I just love all that. By the way, Mount Macedon's actually hidden too. I know. What's not told in this story is, is the joy of the story, yes. I think. Of course, for people in Wood End, this is an iconic house, mm. the Islay House. So, um, it's yep. just, it's beautiful. It's, it's bucolic on some level with these grasses and the sun coming through. Yep. Um, and it's a particular time of year that is so spectacularly beautiful in Wood End. Oh, yes, Wood End. In, in the autumn, in the fall. Yep. And, and he's just captured that, that particular time and the, the shift of light mm. at that time. It's all about the light. And for one right out of the box, the best in show goes to Amity Cabrick Memorial Cross. I loved this when I saw it. <laughs> there is so much about this picture. Despite its apparent simplicity, there, there are levels of complexity. I know this place, I've been to this place, I've approached it from this angle. The perspective is being caught the plinth and the, the stacking of the stone as it becomes the column of this cross. It's been hinted at and captured and, and successfully so. I like it, it's a good picture. I, I, I'm actually finding it hard to find the correct words for this. Maybe there are no correct words. For me, it's the way it made me feel. So I, I get a sense of a cubist painting here. It is, this tells me more about where I know this is than a perfectly detailed perspective uh, drawing or painting that catches the light in the way it really looks. This for me is a moment in time. And it's really powerful from that perspective. I love where things are, um, I would imagine, from the artist's decision, unfinished. Mm. Compositionally, the choice not to show all of the trees, um, if they are in fact trees, I believe they are. Um, the fact that you see part of one here, um, that you have sun coming from the upper side, but just part of it, and here is this monolith, this powerful symbol of... of and it's, it's obscured by a tree yes, as well. Yes, absolutely. And there's a, there's a tonal thing happening here that's showing that turning a corner. Very masterful. 
and, and it's clearly using watercolor, and mm. therefore this will have been, had to have been painted quickly. Yeah, it's a snapshot. And so um, the, their, their approach to this has been rapid, straightforward, visceral, um, powerful, quick. So there's something about not laboring over an image or a painting or a photograph or a drawing or a sculpture, but just getting it down there. And there's something about the immediacy of this work that really speaks to me. And, and here you have the tree and you see a little bit of the cross. I don't know whether the tree was painted first or the cross. Um, it's how things are actually in life. If mm. we just glimpse something, this is what it looks like. Hmm. I like the composition, and I don't know whether it was done by design or just by accident. Either way, it doesn't matter, but yeah. the depiction is of a crucifix or a cross. This sits on the paper and it also forms quadrants around it. There were all sorts of ways you could have put that on, onto the paper and, and depicted the cross, but that, that doubles the narrative value of, of the yes. image. Yes if you will. It's brave, it's courageous. You, you might, in some, you know, that movement in art, the, the naive artists, um, which had no relationship to age. It was just simply this um, eschewing of rules in order to make something. And, and I love that this has, um, I think they've used rules, but they've used their own rules. Yeah, I, I see a sense of, I want to paint this and I want to paint this now, and this is what it will look like, and, yeah. that, and they've achieved whatever that was they intended to do. It's a strong piece of work, and, that, and therefore, how perfect that it's a strong piece of work about a very strong memorial yes. uh, casting. I'm, I'm actually really excited by our choice for oh, Boston I am. Show, <laughs> because... It, it is a maverick choice. There, there is some great work in this exhibition. Oh, indeed. Some really great work. And, and you can see a lot of um, depth of understanding in using creative process across many different media. But this is the one that, for me, I just kept coming back to it. Yeah. I, I went around this space so many times and spent so much time with, with you know, certainly particular images. Um, yeah. I just kept coming back. Well, we both came to this decision independently. Yeah. And at the other end of the room, and we walked towards it, not, not uh, disclosing to each other which one we'd decided, and it was re revelatory. It, mm. Uh, mm. No, there was no argument about this one at all. Yeah. Really, really excited, and I'm really excited to to hear what people's feedback is, how, how others feel about this particular work. Yeah. Um, and congratulations to the, uh, to the artist, artist, to Amity. Yeah, yeah. And, and may the artist keep, oh, yeah. keep painting. Oh yeah. Please, please, keep yes. going. There's real skill under this I, and I, a real I talent. I imagine a bright future. Real talent. Yeah. This is the 49th show. Next year is the 50th that's going to be big. We've got some really big ideas and are looking forward to lots of contributions and lots of people coming through. 50 years of raising money for Woodend, 50 years of contribution back through the art. Worth celebrating.